Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma. Michael is the author of So Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, The Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. To the brightness within you and the truth that is rooted within me. Hi and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with The Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice. Well, Michael and David and I are here in Palm Coast, and we're getting ready, getting things set up, ready for our intentions to start tomorrow. We're all excited. It's going to be an awesome time. Waiting on our guests to arrive tomorrow. Our call-in number is 646-200-4169, and we'd love to hear your comments or questions. We've got a lot of background there, so I'm going to put somebody on mute. Okay, and... um, Today is Memorial Day Celebration 312, and Michael will talk about that here in just a moment. We do already have a caller on the line, but first, let's welcome Michael. Hey, delighted. Welcome, everybody, to the show. We're, calling, we're here in uh, sunny Palm Coast, Florida. Absolutely gorgeous, beautiful day here, and uh, we're in a state of delight at the opportunity to learn and to teach with you the process of forgiveness. And our invitation regarding Memorial Day is to have you recognize that every time that you've been in some form of turmoil or hostility or fear or grief or pain, you're the one who is there. And we need to change the dynamic on the planet if we're going to expect the planet to live last for long. We need to change the dynamic of you made me. You made me angry, you made me sad, you made me afraid, you did me this, you did that. And we're going to invite everybody on the show to shift out of that you made me state into recognizing that every time you've had hostility or fear, you've been there and you're the one with the problem. It's not about them. And if we deny and dissociate from that pain, then we get into the blame game. And ultimately, the blame game leads to war. We're looking to put an end to war on planet Earth, literally. I mean, we mean literally put an end to war. And to get to the point where we recognize that we are human beings, and human beings are this awesome active presence of love, and when we function as that, everything changes. So here we are with an invitation. If you find yourself in some form, any form of hostility or fear, What we're going to invite you to do is to take responsibility for that and to learn to forgive, to remove that. If you don't know how to do that or that doesn't make sense, you don't have a clue how that might work, then we invite you to jump onto our website, www.whyagain.com, and you'll find a link there on the right-hand side that says Download Worksheets. That will give you the whole story of how to change what's going on inside of you, and how to forgive. So let's uh, tap in. Uh, is Dr. Tim with us? Is David with us? Well, Levine, David, are you should be on? Over, David should be over there with you. He's not on the switchboard. And Dr. Okay. Tim is on, yes. And we uh, awesome. do welcome Dr. Tim. Tim. Okay, well, let's just say hi to Tim, and then we'll uh, go on and check in with our caller and see what's happening. Well, good morning. And I'm excited How are you, sir? I'm doing well. I'm excited for you to be uh, starting this intensive, and I look forward to hearing about all of the fabulous growth and the exchange of love that you're going to have going on for you down there. And um, I did get to listen to the Tuesday show. You're right. It was phenomenal. So thanks to Carrie and Michael. That was pretty Michael. awesome. Uh, 
that was a pretty awesome statement from Michael, wasn't it? Just uh, the tapping in on that level from pure cynic to, oh, I have a purpose. <laughs> so it's just uh, amazing, you know, and I can think back to when in my own life I had no clue that I had a purpose. I thought, you know, they taught me I was a chunk of protoplasm and I was here to make money and, oh, crazy stuff. Anyway. Glad to have you with us, sir. And Jeannie, do you want to tap in our caller and let's say hello? Okay, we will do. It's area code 909. You're on the air. Yeah, hi. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Janet, and um, thank you for hi, taking Janet. the call. Hi, hi. Yes, what you're talking about is amazing. I am calling because I have been going through taking the responsibility, and I realize it ultimately comes to myself and my love of myself or my um, trust in myself. And today I'm just really, everything is kind of just coming to the surface, and it's just like I'm saying, what's the point? What is the point? And, and I know there is a point, and I know I'm here for a purpose, and I understand all of that. But, you know, today I'm just feeling, oh, boy. You know, you've got to raise it, but you have to continue. It's continue work in progress. It's like getting tired of it. So I'm just in that I hear you loud and clear. Yeah. I hear you. And, yeah. and my offering would be that, or I guess I'd start with a question. That would be, have you ever held a newborn child? Yes, I have. I have two sons, so yes. Uh, okay, so yes. think about the first time you held your newborn, your first newborn, okay. your second newborn. How okay. awesome was that? It was wonderful. It was so all inspiring. Did, did, did those newborns, in order to experience that space of delight, did they need to do anything, say anything, have anything, get anything, satisfy anybody? Did they have to do any of that? No. No. So here's, here's the bottom line. Life is awesome because life is awesome. That's all. It is the presence of love, and it is its own reward, its own delight, its own awesome pleasure. However, if we come from a genetic history where life isn't about life, life is about rage and grief and fear and pain and hatred and vengeance and getting even and, you know, making money and and suffering – then we come from a bloodline that's filled with all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, one of my favorite sayings in that regard is we, we stand on the shoulders of giants, but when the stress is up and the chips are down, we're controlled by the smallest mind in our bloodline. So here's the upshot of it. There's work to be done. You know, it's like somebody gave you this beautiful brand new computer that you can do all kinds. Let's say you're an artist and, You just want to do this awesome art, and you have this computer with which to do that art, but there are bugs in the programming, and you're going to have to work the bugs out in order to do the art that you want to do. So, okay, there's a job to be done. And what happens is our gods write their names upon our feelings. So if we hold precious the god of rage, of fear, of pain, of sadness, if we come from a bloodline that thinks grief and loss and, and war is a natural way to live, then our programming is filled with bugs. It's filled with you know, crazy stuff. Yeah. So now comes the work, and the work is to start to kick in and delete and remove those things. Now, there are many, many systems of thought that talk about wonderful, positive things. In fact, In my book, uh, Why Is This Happening to Me Again, I talk about the disease of premature positive thinking, where people say, well, just, you know, just be positive, just think good thoughts, and then everything will be okay. And that's a fraud. That's a lie. It's not true. If you're a premature positive thinker, you're in trouble because there's a foundation upon which you build your life. And if the foundation is filled with garbage, then... What ends up is garbage, no matter how much positive. No, you're right, and and I mean I teach workshops on getting to the heart of the matter, getting to the to the belief systems that are holding you down, your inner child, your inner core. I understand that, yes, and you're absolutely right. If you don't get rid of these old thought patterns, be it from this lifetime or a thousand lifetimes ago, if you don't get rid of them, they're going to keep popping up and coming up as knee jerk reactions. 
until you do right. say, okay, I recognize this, I'm aware of this, and this has nothing to do with today and everything to do with the past, which I'm letting go. Yeah, no, I know. You're right. You're so, absolutely right. So from five to death is but a breath. From birth okay. to five is a lifetime. <laughs> and so we carry these genetic and then environmentally reinforced patterns and we can talk about how we're going to change them and how we're going to think positive. You know, we can talk about all those things. But I'll say that in 45 years of research, there's only one person that I've found and one tool in particular that I've found okay. that supports people in going in and actually changing the patterns. Okay. Talking about changing the patterns without the tools of cracking open the dissociated mind is kind of like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Oh, doesn't this new view look nice while the ship is going down? Yeah, right. And well, so the iceberg is there. I, uh, say again? While well, the iceberg is still there. Exactly. So so the, the the reason why I've dedicated my life to the teaching of the ancient Aramaic idea of forgiveness is because whenever we hold something in the dissociated mind, and that's pretty much the, the norm of our culture, We'll, we'll have nice stories about how to change it, but none of those stories change it. The only thing I've found that consistently changes what's in the dissociated mind that allows you to go in and collapse projections that make it about something outside of you and change the content is the forgiveness sheet, the forgiveness process from the Aramaic. And that's what we're talking about being under download worksheets. The first eight links on that section of our site gives you the, uh, the worksheet itself, the step-by-step -step process. The, um, uh, there's a chapter 24 from my book that explains the why and how of it. And then there are several radio shows where we walk people through the step-by-step -step process. But belief systems don't change by, I pray about having a new belief system. I hope about having, I wish about, I sit around and critically think about. I lay on the couch and talk to my analyst for years. That doesn't change the dissociated content of the mind. A man named Yeshua 2,000 years ago knew exactly how to do it. He taught a tool called forgiveness. It's literally how you crack that part of the mind open so that you can go back into direct relationship with its content and change it. Anything that doesn't take you back into direct relationship with the dissociated content leaves that dissociated content absolutely unchangeable. doesn't matter how much we talk about doing it. Until we go in and do that, it doesn't change Mm -hmm. And I certainly understand that it gets old. You know, I've been doing this work for 45 years. I'm not, I won't proclaim to be finished yet. You know, there's a great story of a major healing process in the Old Testament with this fellow named Job. And you get some sense of how intense Job's process becomes by the intermission that he asks for. Job says, God, I need an intermission. Do you, do you have any recollection of the intermission that he asked for? No. Well, what he says is, just give me time to swallow my saliva. And I think that gives us an indicator of just how intense the process of healing becomes when you, when you recognize that you're taking on a thousand generations because these thoughts, yeah. these feelings, these realities are literally structured. There's a, a link that Jeannie has put on our website under other links, and it's a, a video that you can watch free called The Ghost in Our Genes. And when you recognize that these energetic thought, feeling, and reality and behavior patterns are passed on, it's, it takes a significant commitment to move through them. And, right. and the beauty is with the tools, it can be done. Without the tools, it can't be done. Right. Well, they say for every time we heal ourselves, we heal seven generations. I can hardly hear you. Oh, they say, I, they say that when we heal ourselves, we help heal seven generations of our That's family. That's the idea. Exactly. Yeah. What is exactly your that's why. And, uh -huh. uh, our website is www.whyagain.com. Whyagain.com. <laughs> Pardon me. On the right hand side, about six links down, you'll see one that says "Download Worksheets." That will give you the worksheet, give you the explanation, and then there are about a half a dozen different radio shows you can just right click and save them to your computer, and listen okay. to us walk somebody through. So there are at least six different sets of custom instructions for walking through the worksheet and how to do it. And of course, if you get stuck or come across something that doesn't make sense, we love to have your phone call and to uh, help to clarify the tools. Okay. 
Thank awesome. You. Thank you for your call. Great. Any You're support welcome. we can be along the way, please, please pick up the phone. How did you find out about the show, by the way? Um, on Blog Talk Radio. I saw oh, cool. you there, and then I, I've been following you. Yeah, yeah, and I've been listening, and, and today I just had, and I know it's, you know, when stuff comes up, it's time to heal. And um, so that's why I called in. So thank you very much. Fabulous. And, and know that as you're stepping into the tools, there's a whole community all around the globe. I mean, we've got folks in the Middle East listening right now, in Europe, in Asia, all over America. And each of those people is sending and beaming the active presence of love toward you to support you in the process. To me, that's one of the awesome blessings that, uh, that we get to have by having this community. That's true. That is very true. And I thank you for, for have created this and this for having created this. And you have a blessed day. Delighted to be on the team. Blessings. Thanks for the call. We we'll okay. look forward to hearing from you again. Jeannie, any other callers? Anything happening in the chat room? We do have another caller. Area code 954. You're on the air. Hello, my heart family. This is Nene. Hey, Nene. <laughs> Well, um, just want to share with you, uh, last night we had the Latin support group, and it's becoming very powerful, very well. The attendance was very nice and very powerful. And we spoke about the responsible communication, everything perfect. And then at the end, I, I asked everybody to hold hands and invoke Ruha Dakusha to help us healing. And then we had our social part with the tea, and all of a sudden this lady starts telling a story about um, an, you know, um, an issue that upsets her with her mom. And I said to her, well, notice that you're not breathing. Let me go through the process with you. And I asked the group to hold the space of love. And it was just awesome, Michael, really awesome what she got Very to cool. in in contact and everybody was there present, the environment, the silence that was created, the healing, it was just beautiful. Like she, was, she had the, I guess, the vitality of the group, you know, gave her the vitality to really, you know, do the, the workshop because she has been resistant to do the workshop. She comes to the workshops, but then she's always resisting. And in that moment, and she was, you know, we did it orally, and it was just extraordinary. Very powerful. That's awesome. Yep. Fabulous. Then, well, any, uh, any, was there any uh, new learning for you in supporting her through that process? Uh, in well, the power of um, of when you you're willing you're willingly going through the the process, the power of uh, facing the truth. And I've learned, you know, how much we have blocked the truth. And then when you have that vitality and the willingness and the help of the group, the community, how powerful that is to create a space, safe space of love for, you know, for her. And I'm sure everybody there, you know, healed whatever part resonated with each other. Cool. Fabulous. Yeah. Well, anything else to share about it uh, in terms of your uh, your insights? Well, and for me, you know, it was awesome. And I, my, after we had a conversation, you and I, yesterday about, um, you know, relationships and uh, not perhaps part of me says I don't deserve it. And I think positively that after my experience in the still point breathing about asking my mother to support me and to protect me and, you know, to embrace me in my light and my love has created for me. I've been doing workshops today about my self-worth and my self-acceptance as a human loving being. So that door really opens. All of a sudden I saw so many times when I put myself in a situation that I accept a situation where I'm number two. Ah. So I've been able to embrace, okay, and see, okay, I'm I'm responsible. Part of my energy calls for it. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Very cool. Well, congratulations. Uh, welcome to a new layer of the process, and uh, I, I acknowledge you and applaud you for uh, your level of commitment and how you just keep moving through the layers. Thank you, thank you. So I, I, I said uh, I'm going to do a mind shifter again about um, self love. I think that's that's my next part. So a good a good mind shifter around self love is. I deserve to be totally mm-hmm. embraced mm-hmm. Yeah. i deserve to be to- i deserve to be totally embraced in absolute love mm-hmm. just because the yes. creator put the breath of life in me. Nothing else required, just because the Creator put the breath of life in me. And for those who might not be be familiar with the mind shifter process that we're talking about, that thought is one that what you would do if that one, you know, resonates something for you, then you take a piece of paper and you divide it down the middle. On the left-hand side, you write that thought. And then on the right-hand side, you write everything that comes up in response to it. And as those things come up, Every thought, every feeling, good, bad, or indifferent, doesn't matter. Every sensation in your body, every avoidance thought, just do a total brain dump. And when you run out of things to write, then write that thought again. I deserve to be wholly connected to love or embraced in love just because the Creator put the breath of life in me. And then let every thought, well, who are you trying to kid? That's crazy. Or, you know, whatever comes up and process through it. So very good. Cool. Yeah, and I also I was able to notice that this has been our third meeting for the Latin group, and now people this week started to do their 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 worksheets. So I saw okay, they are starting to create the brain cells to see that the tool is important. That also I was able to see that that little by little they are starting to come into their their tool. Well, that's awesome. If you're getting that result after three weeks, that is huge and fabulous. Nice work. Yeah, and then, well, I want to thank Hugo and Maritza Torres because they, you know, they have their house, beautiful home, and they want to continue with the group, and they are inviting other people. We had two new faces last week, uh, last night. So very nice. Cool, very powerful. And also Gustavo Barney. Gustavo Barney is going to facilitate the house or the place for the um, support group in English starting next week. Right. So cool. and he has um, he has a beautiful place and uh, available. I think it's one of his offices available. So I'm going to forward the information, but I, I want to acknowledge and thank him for being so supportive in this journey. Powerful. Wonderful. Well, we acknowledge him and thank him as well, and maybe uh, when we're down in Fort Lauderdale, maybe we'll be able to attend. You know, we've got a couple of weeks in May where we're going to be down there, and maybe we can attend and be part of the support group or even uh, present the worksheet or something with uh, the group of folks you're working with. Okay, great. All right, love you. Blessings. Thanks for the call. Uh, Same hug. I accept. Well, that's very cool. So, Jeannie, what's happening? Well, not much. Uh, Dr. Tim's dropped off, so uh, he probably had a client or somebody he had to go see. And uh, lots of boats going by here. It's an absolutely beautiful day. I'm sitting on the back deck at Shannon's home, and um, she has really been helpful this morning. We thank her. I don't know if she's listening or not, but we do have another caller that popped in. Awesome. Let's go for it. Area code 970, you're on the air. Hey, Jeannie and Michael. It is Carrie in Colorado. Welcome, Carrie. Glad you're with us. I know where you are. It's a beautiful place. Oh, I'd love to be there with you. But um, such a fascinating conversation this morning and so in alignment with the same things that have been happening in my world today. I actually had a phone call from a family I'm very close to from the mother and um, who I've been sharing this work with, and she and her husband are t- 
totally changing the course of their lives, and they love it. And um, there's been a lot of um, polarization between some of the adult kids and expression of, you know, that how we draw each other in and mirror the crystals that are in there. And they're, the one of the daughters has been suppressing with alcohol and her husband, her husband grew up with a mother who was an alcoholic who he was, I think, somewhat abused by. And so he was being abusive to her because of that. And he said certain words that were very unkind. And the mother, in telling me the story, said, I can't remember when those words were said to me. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I can remember when those words were said to me, you know. And um, what an amazing, it's just like so visible, you know, are these genetic patterns that we're carrying around and then they set up a resonance in our world and we all get to, I feel like here I am in this chain reaction, you know, with the same group of people and um, it's happening at different levels with each person and it's just so amazing how it, those things just bubble to the surface and as they do, uh, I'm really glad there's been a trickle-down process of some members of the family receiving these tools and starting to use them and then starting to share them. They ordered one DVD that I recommended, which is the, the circle one of yours. And I've just watched it several times and taken notes on it, and they're about to share it with the kids that are having some of these issues. So, oh, man, I just wanted to say, just <laughs> what I was hearing this morning, at the beginning of your show is so right on with everything going on here and I was excited to hear about the the download DVD at your or video at your site about um, about I can't remember exactly what you said, but about our the echo in our genes or whatever it was. And uh, anyway, just wanted to share that because I'm so excited. It is so exciting to see how how just that domino effect, you know, and how connected we all are and as we are, hopefully it's going both directions, you know, as I'm clearing on this end and it's more is coming up on that end and and then that's resonating through me and through other members in the circle, memories that have to do with, you know, their own their own history. And, um, and now we've got these tools to begin infusing that with love. And I, I love the thing that you just said of, deserving to just be fully loved, you know, because because I have breath, because I'm here. Hello? Hello, oh, hello? It is, uh, it is, I had my mute button on, excuse me, but uh, it is just uh, superbly exciting when you watch people who grab a hold of those things become conscious of them and are willing to take them on and change them. It's like there's there's nothing in the world quite like watching the sparkle in somebody's eye when human life returns to it, is there? Oh, God, that is so true. And I'm I'm so excited that this is percolating in the periphery of this family, too, because there's been a lot of trauma going on and really to the point of literal abuse. Um, and... Everybody's kind of hanging in there, trying to keep going. But the fact that these tools are starting to trickle down and there will be the opportunity for all the family members to grasp them is just so exciting. I mean, what kind of planetary shifts happen as we start shifting, you know, whole family units? Yeah, getting the uh, the multi generational uh, work, the acceleration that happens when one generation uh, adds their energy and their healing process to another is pretty cool. It's pretty pretty powerful. Yeah, they have really they have really young children who are being very affected by the um, you know the processes that are going on right now that are 
real extreme expression of some very devastating long term, you know, emotional family patterns and insanity. Yeah. It's, it's exactly that's, right. That's pretty much that's pretty much typical. That's that's the, the way of the world today, just about. Yeah. You know, even I, I mean, over the years, I've worked with people who, who you know, the culture looks at is high level. You know, high functioning doctors, lawyers, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, when you work with their children, even though they're you know the upstanding pillar of the community and looked up to in the community and, uh, you know, all the awards of the, that this club and that club and this part of the community give them. And you work with their kids and the, the grief and the rage and the pain that rules those lives is just unbelievable. And, you know, you'd look and from the outside, it all looks so cool. It's, it's very much, you know, in the uh, in the ancient scriptures, Yeshua, if I remember correctly, it's in the book of Luke, defines a Pharisee, and he says, "For you, you keep the outside of the cup and the platter clean, but on the inside, you're filled with hostility and fear." Of course, the Greeks translate a little differently. The Greeks said you're filled with ravening and wickedness. You know, kind of strange language, but. But that's really what it is that the that you know so many people spend so, come out of a, a family system, and I don't care if you grow up to be the the president of the United States, if you haven't handled the fact that you know if if dad was an alcoholic and beat the hell out of you, if you haven't handled the realities that come from that, then the same dynamics are going to repeat themselves. They're going to live in that. Why is this happening to me again? And to recognize that this work of Yeshua was so powerfully pointed at the healing of those dynamics on the planet and sadly became a belief system about, you know, maintaining something that just wasn't accurate in terms of its translation. So it is it is pretty awesome to watch the lights come on and watch people move through those traumas. And, you know, we we, we are blessed to hear from folks who are, doing that in so many ways. You know, if you were on the show two days ago when Michael called in, and we are we are just ecstatic about the fact that uh, Michael and his wife, Pegs, he, he affectionately calls her Pegs. Her name is Margaret. I have to ask him. I'm not sure why he calls her Pegs. But anyway, we're just so excited. They're coming to the intensive tomorrow night, and they're going to be with us for nine days. And the processing that will happen, the, the work that will be done, will be monumental and awesome. And it's just, you know, if you listen to uh, what Michael shared the other day and uh, how, if you weren't on the show, it's really worth linking into the uh, the archive of the show two days ago with this young man who's military uh, trainer, uh, you know, literally almost killed at the age of five by his mother with a fork and at 17 runs off to the military and uh, becomes, you know, the, the typical culture's hero. Hey, I'm good at killing people. And, you know, he shared with us, you know, he had the blood of thousands on his hands. And uh, a cynic, a professional cynic, perhaps you could call him. And uh, and he turns it around. And, and after 14 months of doing this work, he literally, I mean, he called in to share. And, and when you meet Michael, you know, you look at the stature of this guy. You know, he's about 6'6". Six, six, and clearly knows how to handle himself and, you know, whether it's physically or, or verbally and can cut, uh, you know, rage with the best of them and cynicism. And you hear a guy like this who turns around and says, and I just had what, if somebody told me it happened to them, I would say, we won't repeat it on the air, but BS said, I, I would tell them they were full of it. And he said, it happened to me. I had this vision, and I know that I'm here to bring forward the healing and the expression of love. It's like, hey, you know, what What greater reward could you have than that? It sounds like, uh, Carrie, you're bringing exactly that to this family. So I congratulate you and acknowledge you. you what, what was it, about uh, four months ago that you reconnected with the work? Yep. You know, it's been 25 yep. years ago you were first introduced to it, but uh, yep. but then, of course, everybody went their, their own ways. And uh, to, to just watch what you've done in that three or four months since you connected with it is awesome. Yep. 
And that is really, I did hear Michael, that was so exciting. And um, and we're watching this young man who's a husband who I know was abused as a child by an alcoholic mother and has called in a wife that he is now turning on and doing the same thing to. It's just, oh. And I can't wait till they actually get it one of these days. Well, cool. And, of course, there's that factor of we teach best that which we most need to learn. And so every interaction where you're presenting it, and my experience has been now there's another part of my mind that goes, oh, that's how that, oh, that applies to me too. Oh, man. Absolutely. It's it's also pretty cool from that side, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, many blessings and awesome and have a great time there in Palm Coast. You know, it's a beautiful place and a lot of energy this week. You know, in our intensives, even when the Y workshop is done, it's always a free open workshop. I need to get your mom's number again and uh, give her a call and let her know when we're going to do that. I'm not sure exactly at this moment when it will be, but probably Sunday or Monday. And uh, invite okay. her if she wants to come up for the Y workshop. And maybe if you oh, talk awesome. to her, just let her know that that uh, she's got that invitation and we'll take it from there. I will do that and I'll text you her number again. All right. Awesome. Blessings. Thanks for the call, Carrie. Thanks for carrying on. By the way, for those who don't know who Carrie is, CarrieEllis.com, and uh, her book is Super Immunity Secrets. been working for more than a couple of decades on understanding how immunity works and how to support it. So we should be getting a case of your books here uh, any day now, I assume. Yeah, I would think so. They they ought to be there any second. Cool. I I think they should have been there yesterday, so hopefully they'll get there today. Awesome. Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, okay blessings. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye bye. Oh, oh, it doesn't um, get any better than that. Sarah in the chat room said Peggy is a common nickname for a Margaret. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. We look forward to having them with us for the I, next time, Dave. I don't know how you get from Margaret to Peggy or to Peg's, but hey, <laughs> however it's done. <laughs> yeah. I haven't run into that one before, but anyway, cool. Nobody else so has hand have... up at now. Okay. okay, anything happening in the chat room? No. Typical hellos, how are you? No questions. Okay. Six, four, well, six. our calling number. Go ahead. Go for it, sweetie. 646-200-4169. Press 1. That puts you in queue to talk to Michael. We'd love to hear from you. And puts you in queue to talk to Jeannie, because her input is awesome as well. So if you and I were sitting face-to-face, and I'd just done a Why Is This Happening to Me Again workshop, or said what I've said so far about forgiveness. Would that wrinkle any feathers for you? Would that bring any questions for you? Would that create any confusion? Gee, how could I create those kinds of things in my life over and over and over again? Well, well, it is true. I've been through it over and over and over again, but it was always somebody else that did it to me. Well, if you live in the world where you believe somebody else is doing to you what it is that's happened to you over and over and over again, how does he get to work out that you're the only one that was there every time? Maybe it's time to go, hmm, maybe there's another level of this happening. And the level that's happening is that as a creator, whatever you hold within your structure is going to happen again and again and again. Once you choose to be responsible for it and begin to change it, then you change the dynamics of what happens inside of you and around you. It's a most awesome process. And uh, we're delighted to be here to support you in learning that process and putting it to work in your world. And so our calling number is 646-200-4169. We would love to hear your sweet voice and your thoughts. Go ahead, sweetie. We have a caller, area code 541. You're on the air. Hi. Hey, it's Julie Matthews from Ashland. Hello. Welcome, young lady. Hi. Hey. Um, I have been working on something, and I'm learning something. And 
I thought perhaps I'm sure there's more, and I might benefit from your insight or assistance. Um, I'm working on, uh, I'm uh, from my deep inner sense of who I truly am. Um, I need to forgive someone of some debts, and I have resistance okay, to so that because I really I could use the money. All right. <laughs> yes. So, so, so when you say forgive someone. Remember that forgiveness is all about what goes on inside of you. It's not doing something outside of you. Are you right. talking about letting go of a debt that somebody owes you, money? Yeah, and, and I do see that my upset and what goes on inside of me and, in fact, what created the whole situation is um, um, uh, <laughs> what was it? Um, that... Um, I well, my upset is that I feel hoaxed and duped, even though I did set it up as kind of a control in the relationship, not kind of, but you know, and so you so you set it up so that you could hoax them <laughs> and dupe them, and now you're feeling hoaxed and duped is that is that was that kind of the connection I just made? Well, yeah, you made that better than I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so then I would do some worksheets on being hoaxed and being duped and duping and hoaxing people and trying to control them and, and all those sorts. So that sounds like a whole arena that would be really good to uh, to work through. Yeah, yeah, and the forgiveness, you know, is um, forgiving myself for... How I don't forgive yourself comfort. ever. Don't ever forgive yourself. Well, forgiving Please that don't I... ever forgive yourself. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I understand that. Uh, thanks for correcting me. Okay. Um, forgiving how I chose to use my creator energy Yay. to make, it, to make right. it seem as though I was hoaxing someone or and I was hoaxing myself. And right. anger comes up about that because, um, you know, uh, it's an unwanted trait, <laughs> and I'd rather project it. But I don't choose. I I would rather dissolve it at this point. That's exactly what I want to do. Right. And, you know, the debt itself. I was getting some insight that, um, you know, God, Creator doesn't even know about debt. God only knows about giving. And so if I focus on giving, you know, nobody owes me anything. God doesn't owe me anything, you know. Just giving, you know, if I focus on giving, I move towards being fully sustained regardless of debt. You know, in other words, the debt, I don't need to hold debts over others in order to feel safe and sustained right. and for my needs to be Good met. catch. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it's kind of tricky because, well, it's just, I mean, I think I have to get myself to fully actually willingness within myself, okay, to let this person off the hook and yet the hard part for me is to, you know, I I don't even know if I have to hold them accountable when I see that um, I'm the one that did it all, you mm-hmm. know. And so so I have to well, really perhaps, trust the lesson yeah. in there. Yeah. Perhaps, uh, you know, tapping into the responsibility communication tool. You know, I know you've got that DVD communication. Did you hear what I think I said? perhaps giving a listen to that DVD and then writing a letter of responsibility communication about it where you own, you know, I realized that I set this up and it was my form of manipulation. And the fact is I gave you the money. So how about if we work out a plan? Yeah, I don't care. Can you do $10 a month? Can you do $10 a week? Then work out a plan to take care of the fact of it while you own the emotional component in you that was about manipulation and clean it up and and resolve okay, to be cleaner good. in your relationships. Yeah, see, that's good. And, and I'm grateful for the lesson and the integrity of that, you know, 
not blame that they they had a part in it, but they did accept the money. But but it, uh, you know, so I would like it back, but not with the grudges and grievances attached. I'm owning all that, so it's right. in their hands to choose according to their own integrity. Yeah, and and as you give up the grudges and grievances in yourself. As you Mm -hmm. drill down with that forgiveness worksheet process and you clean out the grudges and the grievances, you'll change the whole dynamic. And then it could because it just could just be real simple of, you know, uh, what Uh what would be a reasonable way what would be a reasonable way for us to just take care of this so that you know, so it's comfortable and easy for you. And I do get my money back and thank you for the lesson. I've cleaned up a big piece in my life. And, and that yeah, might open a space for some mutual healing for whatever was going on for them on the other end of it to do the same. And, you know, if if you can do that, if you can le- learn and teach that lesson, um, that's that's far more important than the money. And that doesn't mean the money isn't important. That doesn't mean you don't say, and, you know, what would be a way that you could handle it that would make it easy? But you know? I'm not. A lot of times I'm if honest. it's so huge that people can't, Imagine handling a, a particular debt. They just move out of communication. You never hear from them again. Whereas if you can make it, you know, easy. You know, you owe me a hundred bucks, and gee, I know you haven't got the hundred dollars. So, how about just give me ten post dated checks, <laughs> and over a, over ten months, and then it's taken care of. And let's hug and let's remember that our relationship's more important than these issues about money, and the manipulations I do, and the manipulations you do, and like you know, just. Let's clean these things up. Yeah, because it, it, it was choking us both. It's stifling. It's life right. terminating, you know, to, I hear you. to have to have a hold that goes on and on and on and on when really we should be freely living without uh, the attachment to some debt, you know, <laughs> So, or the outcome of the the removal of the debt. You know, it's, it's more about removing that which created the debt and dissolving that tendency and desire. Anyway, nice. I think, Very I think cool. I'm on track. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mike. Awesome. Love your work. Well, we hold you in a blessing. I love all of our work. I love everyone who shares um, intimately and sincerely. Uh, and I did hear uh, the Michael, the Navy SEAL show, and it's awesome the work that he is aware of, that the light that he has to share for others. It's just awesome that he wants to go forward with his divine purpose. It's really inspiring. Yeah, it's it's so powerful to watch. You know, I can remember the day that uh, you know when he shared how he left the workshop and out and sat in his car. And as I followed him out, you know, it was kind of from that military threatening mind and voice of, you know, is this guy crazy following me out to the car? Doesn't he know what I'm capable of? (laughs) To hear him move from that to this sweetness of being that's just, I mean, it's so clear when, when you're with him and there's somebody around who's processing, it's so just powerfully clear how deeply he cares for people and and is there for people. I mean, it's just awesome. So it's just it's it's uh, it's beyond words, beyond words. Well, oh, Michael, it shows us that no matter how much self hatred we have for ourselves, that that true being is there and you know can guide us away and through and dissolve the hatred. And live a whole nother life. So, so is this uh, is this is, seeing as how this resonates at the in the context of this whole conversation about money? Is uh, is there some link between uh, self hatred and money for you? That oh, would probably I, be a good yeah. thing to be topic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I'm working on self hatred all the time because I know that's the bottom line or one of my bottom lines possibly for feeling separate yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and, and well, well, I'm learning to be okay with that I have believed that self-hatred was real 
and it has resided in me, and I see its ugly head when it rises with less judgment and more willingness to move through the opportunity, move with the opportunity to uh, learn more and release more. So um, you may not hear from me that I'm doing worksheets, but I am. (laughs) Very cool. Well, yeah, I do miss your texts that you committed to send me every day. Oh, gosh, I committed. (laughs) You did, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did, I did. Um, yeah. It was only two. It was only two, so I'd love to see those ticks, t- texts pick up again. Just, you know, hey, finish but, my okay. two, smiley face. <laughs> All right. All and it's right. good to hear your voice and that you're moving forward with it and that you're supporting other people with it. That's very powerful, and we appreciate you. Okay. Look forward you. to the time we get face-to-face again. Mm-hmm. Oh, have a great series of intensives in april they sound wonderful yeah we're on it we start tomorrow night we've got uh oh geez i don't know 15 16 people arriving tomorrow night so we're on we're on fast forward awesome awesome (laughs) just got our food delivery in we got a thousand dollars worth of food sitting in the refrigerator and ready to chow down it is awesome fresh and raw organic food it's going to be great and you have one refrigerator? <laughs> Say again? You you have one refrigerator for all that? <laughs> no, no. Actually, we have three, and then we've got about a half a dozen coolers. Oh, good. We're in this beautiful space. We This house is right on the intercoastal waterway, and it's absolutely awesome. And then uh, the folks who we, uh, who we rented the facility from had a little uh, motorhome for us to stay in. And it turned out that uh, the fellow who owned the motorhome wanted to take it and go on a trip. And so they have a son that has a, a little cottage on the property. So here we here we are in the cottage. I'm actually hanging in a hammock in the living room. If you, if you can get this picture, this kid's 30. He's a surfer. He's a fisherman. So I'm, I'm hanging. I'm sitting and laying, pardon me, in a hammock. And when I look to my right, I see five, uh, pardon me, four uh, surfboards, and then hanging in the ceiling, there are three more surfboards, and, you know, like this, just this <laughs> cool, you know, f- old-time Florida cottage, so it's pretty cool, all the Spanish moss, I'm looking out at uh, uh, pin oak trees with Spanish moss hanging down, you know, out the window in this beautiful sunny day, so it's it's pretty cool, I'm blessed. Michael, thank you for describing it, it sounds like a great movie backdrop. <laughs> yeah, it would be. It would be actually. It would it would? It, it's the, the the little cottage that we're in. It'd be kind of like uh, like you'd expect to see in the you know backwoods Louisiana and the alligators out in the back sort of thing. It's, it's, and the house is just this awesome, beautiful, um, beautiful old Florida house right on the intercoastal with a a dock. I'm sure we'll do uh, classes and lots of uh, food events and such out on the dock and big beautiful property. So it's pretty cool. Did I did I hear you say the word alligators? Oh no, we don't mean alligators, or I don't think. But but the cottage okay. that we're in, you know, it's a cedar uh, wooden roof and these surfboards around it. It's just the kind of place that you'd you'd place down in Louisiana with the you know in the back backwater woods and. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good. The world is. All right. Well, small. you have a blessed one, and we'll be in touch. Thanks for your call. Okay, thanks, Michael. Tell Ed we said hello and send our blessings and our love. All right. Take care. Okay, we're down to about five minutes. We have a question in the chat room. Um, yes. Sarah says, Sarah says you get to be a surfer, dude. <laughs> yeah, that, well, uh, that's kind of what it's like. I uh, just, you know, I'm, I'm just surrounded with all these surfboards. It's pretty cool. But the question is, what does it mean when you're having a conversation with someone and they avoid looking into your eyes? Well, of course, it'd be it'd be hard to tell. You know, that could have a thousand different meanings. I uh, I don't know the circumstance, but usually, someone who's going to avoid looking in your eyes doesn't want to connect with you. Uh, and you know what what that means for them might be that they're living in terror. It might mean that they're living in deceit. It might mean that uh, that they're just plain afraid of life. 
Uh, and then what does that say about you? Uh, you know, it depends what the, you know, we know so very well from our Healing to Relationships work that m- most often when there's some form of hostility or fear, it's based in matching bags of garbage. And so uh, what would be the matching bag of garbage uh, with someone who won't look at you might be intimidation, uh, might be punishment, might be the... Uh, the unconscious uh, punishment kind of thing or abuse of some sort. So there might be some kind of match there on some subtle subtle level that would give you some clues into what you might want to look at and do some worksheets around and see where it fits, see how it fits. Any feedback from the chat room on that? Is your mute button on, Jeannie? Not yet. I was just waiting, reading to see. So okay. There's no response yet. Sarah says alligators may be indigenous here. Yeah, there there definitely are. I think we're a little far north. We're up uh, near St. Augustine, so I don't think we're going to see any alligators around this way. But, you know, I, I didn't know this until just a couple of years ago, but in South Florida, actually down in the Keys, they actually have Florida crocodiles. They don't just have alligators here, but they also have crocodiles. So it's kind of interesting. But I think we're a little far north. I think we get a little too chilly up here in the winter for uh, for alligators to show up. So I'm not anticipating was, seeing it anytime soon. It was awesome last time we were here and we were doing the radio show out on the dock and there were dolphins that came and were playing in the water right in front of us. Yes, for sure. We're down to about two and a half minutes, 646-200-4169. Quick question, give us a call, press one, and we'd like to hear from you. And also, uh, so you know, we've, our intensive is full this week. Uh, we start tomorrow night and go through next Saturday. And because uh, that one filled up so quickly, we still had a bunch of people that wanted to do more work. Uh, we've set up a second nine-day residential intensive. So uh, if – and and I'm not 100% sure right now. We're waiting to hear back, but it looks like we may have another house available connected to the property that we're doing this intensive on that we'll be able to use for the second intensive. So if somebody wants to make a trip down to this awesome uh, uh, time of year in Florida, it's probably about 75 degrees right now, beautiful – Blue sun, blue skies, and sunshine, and white puffy clouds. It's absolutely gorgeous. And so next Saturday we'll be beginning a nine-day "Why is this happening to me again?" intensive. And in that nine-day, we'll cover the workshops. Why is this happening to me again? Healing to relationships, communication. Did you hear what I think I said? Purpose, personal power, commit, empowered to heal, mind shifters, hands-on energy field work, still point breathing, and we're going to throw in some of the codependence to interdependence work. So. That's what we'll be doing starting on the 14th through the 22nd. So if you're interested in uh, boosting your work to the next level, and then in a couple of weeks beyond that, we'll be in Jacksonville, Florida, doing a uh, a seven-day workshop series. So it'll be a free uh, Sunday afternoon, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and do an all-day mind shifters and still point breathing, where there is a fee attached to that workshop. But we'll be in Jacksonville. Check the website out, www.whyagain.com. Have the best year yet of your eternal life. Bring a stranger to the show with you tomorrow. Blessings. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the forgiveness doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife, Jeannie, who present the internal Aramaic process of forgiveness. Michael and Jeannie are here every Monday through Friday on Earth Angels Radio. For more on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. That's www.whyagain.com.